Good morning, children. Today I'll start with the new chapter, photosynthesis. It's chapter number five in your book. Now, all the metabolic activities of living organisms, that is the functional activities, they begin with the chemical raw materials that are collectively referred as food. So the food that we take in, formed from the chemical raw materials, help in carrying out the different metabolic functions of our body. You have studied in your previous classes that some organisms, they are capable of synthesizing, that is making their organic food from inorganic substances. Such organisms are called autotrophs, that is all those organisms who can manufacture their own food with the help of the raw materials taken from the atmosphere. Whereas other organisms, they depend upon autotrophs directly or indirectly for their food. They are called as heterotrophs. That means the heterotrophs cannot manufacture their own food. So directly or indirectly, they are depending on the autotrophs for the food. The autotrophic organisms are further categorized as photoautotrophs and chemoautotrophs. Photoautotrophs are the green colored plants and some algae. They synthesize living matter, that is organic compounds, from the inert inorganic materials in the presence of chlorophyll and solar energy. So photoautotrophs are those autotrophic organisms that can manufacture their own food from the raw materials like carbon dioxide, water and presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. And chemoautotrophs are those, they will utilize the energy which is released by the chemical processes for the purpose of synthesizing food like sulfur bacteria. On the other hand, heterotrophs depend upon autotrophs directly or indirectly for the purpose of food. So photosynthesis is a physiological process by which the green plants in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll prepare food in the form of glucose and starch using carbon dioxide and water and release oxygen. So the photoautotrophs are those organisms which carry this physiological process. Now photosynthesis in a way is a very important life process because it provides food for all animal life including human and also the life supporting free oxygen in the atmosphere. That is why this process of photosynthesis is very important. And the definition of photosynthesis is given here. When you learn the definition, don't forget to write the food prepared in the form of glucose and starch. These are the keywords. Or you write the the physiological process by which green plants in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll prepare organic food. Either you add the word organic or if you are only writing food, you mention the term glucose and starch in your definition. Now the raw materials which are required for carrying this process of photosynthesis so there are four important raw materials which are required for photosynthesis and these are carbon dioxide, water, radiant, solar energy and chloroplast. Carbon dioxide is one of the raw materials which helps in the formation of glucose and plants they take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through the stomata of leaves by diffusion. That is the carbon dioxide in the outside atmosphere is 
in higher concentration compared to the carbon dioxide inside the leaf cells so by diffusion the carbon dioxide will enter into the leaf cells and this is used as a raw material one of the raw materials in the process of photosynthesis the second raw material is water it is the second raw material for the process of photosynthesis and plants take water from the soil water with the help of root hair cells by the process osmosis this you have done in previous chapter so from the xylem of the root hair cells the water will be uplifted into the xylem of the stem and then will reach to the xylem cells of the leaf carbon dioxide has also entered into the leaf cells through stomata water from the root has also through xylem tissue has entered into the leaf cells then radiant energy or solar energy the radiant energy is trapped from the solar energy that is the energy from sun by the green colored pigment chlorophyll present in the chloroplast so this process of photosynthesis takes place in the green colored plants only or in the green parts of the plants because that part contain chloroplast which is a type of plastid which contains a green colored pigment chlorophyll so chlorophyll is important for trapping the solar energy from the sun and to start with the process of photosynthesis without chlorophyll the solar energy will not enter into the leaf cells and photosynthesis will not take place now we will come to the part the chloroplast chloroplast these are green colored plastids found in the green colored part of plants that you all know it they are very abundant in leaves normally 40 to 50 chloroplasts are there in each cell in the leaves they are present below in between the upper epidermis and lower epidermis of the leaf that is in the mesophyll tissue i explained you the mesophyll tissue in the when i was teaching you about the leaf cells that is transpiration chapter i'll show you the figure again see this is the figure this is the upper epidermis of leaf this is the lower epidermis of leaf in between these two layers of leaf you will find the mesophyll tissue the upper tightly packed mesophyll tissue is called as palisade mesophyll and the lower to it towards the lower epidermis are freely and loosely arranged mesophyll cells called spongy mesophyll you will find lot of chloroplast in these parts of the leaves then you will find these these are also found in the guard cells of stomata and chloroplast also is present in the outer layers of young green stems so where do we find chloroplast that is in between the upper and lower epidermis of the leaf cells in the mesophyll cells of leaf in the guard cells of stomata and in the outer layers of young green stems there are about 5 lakh chloroplasts per square millimeter of leaf surface chloroplasts they are minute can you see this diagram they are microscopic oval shaped structures living structures of plant cells each chloroplast is divided into three parts the membrane double walled membrane then this dotted black dot can you see this is the ground matrix called stroma and these dice like structure flattened called thylakoids these are the three main parts of chloroplast the membranes the chloroplast is covered by a double membrane envelope each membrane double walled can you see this one and this double walled membrane and the double walled membrane this is the inner membrane this is the outer membrane 
This is made up of lipoprotein. Lipoproteins are soluble proteins that combine with the that combine with and transport fat and other lipids in the blood plasma. So they are soluble proteins that carry the fats and lipids to be transported to the blood plasma. And this double walled membrane of chloroplast they are selectively permeable in nature. That is they will allow only the selective substances to move in into the chloroplast and to move out. In between the two membranes, see this is the inner membrane, this is the outer membrane. In between there is a space which is called as periplastidetal space. Now the second part is called stroma. The chloroplast inside is filled with a colorless ground substance called stroma. This is a living matrix. Then third part is thylakoid. In the stroma are present these flat membrane made up of membrane and sac like structures. Sac means the there is an empty space in between with the membranous wall. Placed one above the other. Can you see that? Like a dice placed one above the other called thylakoids. This one, one thylakoid, this is second thylakoid, this is third thylakoid. They all are placed one above the other in the form of piles of coins. Can you see that? This collective thylakoids together in the form of pile, this is called as granum. Single collective form of thylakoid is granum. This is other granum. This is third granum. This is fourth granum and together all these are called grana and each granum is made up of pi large number of thylakoids placed one above the other in piles. These piles of thylakoids are called grana and the grana are connected. One grana is connected to the other. Similarly, this grana C is connected by these tubular structures called stromatal or fret lamellae. Then we'll come to chlorophyll. This is the most important pigment which is found in the walls of thylakoid. See this is a thylakoid, single thylakoid. I have told you the inner part is empty. It is only a membranous bound structure on its membranous wall is present this pigment chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is a vital pigment which is formed in the wall of thylakoids. The chlorophyll is a highly complex organic compound made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and magnesium. There are five types of chlorophyll molecules out of which the most common and abundant are chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. The chlorophyll molecules are associated with the membranes of thylakoids. That is, they are present in the walls of thylakoids. About 250 molecules of chlorophyll form one quantosome. Quantosome is a group of pigment molecules required for carrying out a photochemical reaction. So, group of these molecules together will form one quantosome. And then this is capable of trapping one quantum of energy and convert into chemical energy. This process is called photochemical act. The leaf appears green. Why? Because the chlorophyll reflects away by the green wavelength. Reflects away the green wavelength of light spectrum. The light spectrum comes in the, come in the form of Vibgoir. The violet then indigo, blue, this way you have studied in physics, red. So you will find this, the leaves, the green wavelength of light is being reflected, which gets into our eye and we could see the green color of the green parts of the plant and absorbs mainly red and blue wavelengths. 
which are the most effective for photosynthesis in addition to chlorophyll molecules the chloroplast also contain some other helping pigments also called carotenes red orange pigment xanthophyll that is yellow colored pigment the function of these accessory pigments is they help in the transfer of light energy to chlorophyll a and this chlorophyll is highly sensitive to light too much light will destroy it and the formation of chlorophyll itself depends on light also so optimum amount of light is to be provided now chlorophyll becomes excited in the presence of light it means that the photon that is the unit of light energy is absorbed when the chlorophyll absorbs light energy in the form of photon then the electron inside the chlorophyll will get excited with a high energy level the this is the initial state or this will start or initiates the process of photosynthesis in the absence of light we see the grass color turns yellow why why the grass color turns yellow in the absence of light it is due to the non formation of new chlorophyll or due to the absence of light the older chlorophyll degenerates so the older chlorophyll will degenerate when it will not get proper light and the new chlorophyll will not be formed in the absence of light too much light it will destroy chlorophyll however an optimum light is required for the formation of chlorophyll till here we have we will do today and then tomorrow i will be explaining you the two theories for the mechanism of opening and closing of stomata the new theory and the old theory we'll do it tomorrow thank you